everyone. Um, we've had a fantastic morning this morning. So we've driven along the coast road from Tawin Headland, where we were first thing this morning, where we stayed overnight last night. And we've driven to a place called Klandanug, um, which is just down the coast from Barmouth. The scenery has been absolutely lovely. Neither Nick or I have been up here before, so it's all new ground for us. So we're really enjoying it. Yeah, the roads were really good. Um, we passed through some lovely little villages along the way. It was really great. We've had a really nice day. So I'm just going to show you what this little place is like now. The beach is meant to be stunning. I haven't been down there yet um, and there is quite a lot of history involved here as well so let's go and have a look. Right so this beach car park is just off the main road. It's not a very long road down here and this is the entrance to the car park. It's quite easy to get in, no issues at all. Um, so it goes around to the left hand side as well and you can see us over there in the corner. There's plenty of bins and dog waste bins around, but do you know what? Well, this has got no parking for motorhomes either. So all I would say is that if you're coming down here in the summer folks, then you'd have to think very carefully about it. Um, if you were any bigger than a, a, a little, like a, a, a little camper, if you were as big as us, you would struggle if people had parked in a funny way, because even though you can drive around the car park, you would quite possibly be stuck. Yeah, no facility for motorhomes just to park for the day at all. Now, this is a little cafe. It looks as though it's having some work done at the moment. But I have heard or read that they do the most amazing carrot cake. So, shame they're closed at the moment, but uh, nice benches outside to sit on. Yes, it's a lovely day today. Right, there's a little sign there. Um, yeah, it's called Graham's Calf by the look of it. Right, so there's plenty of bins. Um, and there are toilet facilities on site as well, which is great. Now it's a pain display. I don't think they even really encourage motorhomes to come down here, to be honest. Never mind stay the night, but um, we paid £1.10 for up to two hours um, because we figured we'd be moving on after that anyway. But it really is um, nice. It's just such a shame. They don't seem to want us around. Anyway, by the by, we're here. So we've parked right up in the corner out of the way just so that we didn't uh, aggravate anybody. Um, it does say, quite categorically, on a sign on the side of the toilets that there must be no overnight parking. That's absolutely fair enough. No problem with that at all. But it's just a shame that they can't put some bigger spaces in for us to come and visit in the day, you know? Right, so this is talking about um, the local goings-on at Llandanug. Looks like there's been a jellyfish survey. Perhaps they get a lot of those down here. And there's just a map of the, the beach. So let's go and have a look. Dog control orders, also fair enough. Right, I'm quite looking forward to this. Let's go and see what we can find. Oh, oh. Oh, it looks like, um, like a storm barrier here to stop the sand coming up because it does look as though the sand goes flying around here because it's um, all over the car park. Down the jetty we go. Da, da, da. Oh, didn't expect anything else really. Beautiful. What a fabulous place to live up there. Really, really nice. So we decided to come straight here instead of calling it Barmouth because Barmouth we thought would be a lot busier on the beach with the dogs. And um, also the couple of car parks that I looked at that were a bit more out of the way of the main beach had got height restriction barriers. So although it looked really, really nice and I would like to have gone, um, we decided to, to come here instead. Lovely. Just walked up to the top of the beach here, and the very rocky bit, and there's a fence that goes all the way along. There's all these sand dunes, and there's a sign here that says, we're trying to control the erosion of the sand dunes. Please help us by not entering this area. So. I would say this takes a right battering if there's a storm, for sure.
I've just found this little path that is uh, going up through the sand dunes, the bit where I'm allowed to go. And I'm hoping this is gonna take me to where I next want to go and have a look at. Because there's a really old church here called St Tanugs that was built, well, it's a medieval church. So I'm just gonna go and see if I can find it up here. Excuse my puffing and panting. It's a bit sandy and hilly. Am I near the church? Yes, I think it's taking me back towards the church. And here's the view behind the beach. With the uh, estuary coming down there. Lots of little boats. Beautiful. Such a shame we'd love to stay here. Right, I found the entrance to the church. Look, look how old this looks. Amazing. I'm going to go through this little gate here because I think this is the entrance point. I'm not sure the other gate will let me through. Look at this place. Very, very, very old graves there. Wow. Beautiful old window. Really, really old tombs here. Hmm. Place where everybody's been leaving rocks. I'm not sure what the significance is of that, but I'm sure there must be something. So apparently St Tanugs, this lovely old church, is also known as Church in the Sand because it basically got almost buried and uh, was left derelict for a long, long time. And they came along and restored it, put it back to its former glory. And here it is today still standing. A lot of the old graves have been removed and the headstones laid around the sides. But there is a famous grave here. I'm not sure which stone it would be. Um, but it is the famous poet, Sean Phillips, who was actually buried here. And Sean Phillips actually died crossing over from Shell Island to Llandenug. And I believe that was about 1620. Now I'm really hoping that this is gonna be open. I really want to go in and have a look around. Oh, I think this might be one of the ones with um, Sean Phillips. I don't think that we can read them, to be honest. But these are very old, 1690, 1740. Gosh. Very, very old. Right, let's, let's see if we can get in. Oh. Well, as you can gather, I can't get in. That's such a shame because I've seen some pictures of the inside and it looks phenomenal. Anyway, never mind. Let's just go and have a walk around the other side. I don't think there's another entrance. I did read that it was open, but for whatever reason, they've decided to lock it up. Um, Never mind. Okay, onward. There's a big old bell up there on the top there, but you can see here where all the sand's blown across um, and almost buried all the graves because the stones are nearly disappearing underneath the sand dunes. So, yeah. And this one over here. Yeah, there's a few of them where you can see that they've just been submerged over the years. And the big old stone cross here. Can't even read anything on them anymore. And there we are over the top there. Our little van in the corner. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have a quick coffee and then we're gonna make our way over to Harlech. So we may, if we've got time, get down to the beach Otherwise, we're going to head off to Harlick Leisure Centre, where I believe we can stop overnight. 
Here's hoping, fingers crossed, but I have got a backup plan if it doesn't work. Hi, so we've decided what we are going to be doing now and we are going to try Harlick Beach Car Park. So it looks like a huge car park with, I'm estimating at least 150 spaces for every type of vehicle apart from motorhomes. But we're gonna go and have a look anyway. It looks like there may be a height restriction, but it also looks like there may be a parking area just outside the main car park. And if that's the case, then we're gonna take it. Uh, we'll let you know how we get on.